much. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, with all of you on this independence day. And uh, today, I would like to share my knowledge or the work of renewable energy technology with all of you. And uh, as of all of us will know that renewable energy technologies are going to play very major or important role for decentralized growth or decentralized energy system. So when we are talking about the decentralized energy system, it means that we are moving towards the energy swaraj or the or urja swaraj of a village. So before going into the presentation, I would like to share my presentation with you. Are you able to see my presentation? No, sir, it is not yet visible. Now? Yeah, yeah, now it is starting, sir. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. So, uh, first of all, happy Independence Day to all of you. And I sincerely request you, due to this COVID 19 situation, we have to stay safe and stay healthy. And we have to utilize our digital platform for uh, conversation, meetings, and delivering the lecture. So, as earlier mentioned by the Vice Chancellor, that we are celebrating 150 years of Mahatma Gandhi. And considering the Mahatma Gandhi's dream of rural development, I have chosen the theme of renewable energy technologies. And before going into the main lecture, I would like to share with you my cooperation with Indira Gandhi uh, National Tribal University. In 2014, when the President of India visited Norway, we had the opportunity to sign the agreement or memorandum of understanding between the IGNT and the University of Agadir under the Indo-Norwegian Cooperation Program. And the objective of that program was how we can develop and strengthen mutual cooperation between Norwegian and Indian higher education institutions. And the projects which have been sanctioned during that visit of the President of India, which was hosted by the Royal King of Norway, and under that India-Norway cooperation program, 15 projects have been, had been sanctioned. And among them, one of the projects was between the University of Agada and the Indira Gandhi National Travel University. Initially, this project it was for the two years, but we, we have uh, given, or we had delivered the objectives, and we received the extension for one more year. And the key objective of that project was that how we can design and develop real-time multimedia, uh, multimedia cloud for implementation of Indian Norwegian digital meta-university for sustainable collaborative teaching, learning, and research activities. From the University of Agadir side, myself was leading the project, and from Indira Gandhi National Travel Institute, Dr. Vikas Singh, he was leading the project. And during these four years of time, we organized many events many conferences, many lectures, and we worked jointly on developing many projects related to the sustainable energy system or for the sustainable development of the society. Under this project, we had the opportunity to contribute in the first international seminar on new education policy. In short, we call it Namodi Framework, which was held at Indira Gandhi National Travel University American Duck in July 2016. And under this project, uh, under the INCP project, IGNT and UIU, they have presented how we can include the United Nations Sustainable Development Group on developing new education policy for the India. So we started working on the new education policies with this workshop from 2016. 
And during this workshop, the key focus was that how we can integrate the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals in framing the new education policy for India. I am very glad after reading the new final version of the or final approved version of the new education policy that some of the findings from this workshop have been included in this policy document. So I am very happy that India Norway cooperation project between the Indira Gandhi National Tribal University and University of Pakistan have successfully contributed up to some level in this national education policy document. Here you can see that some of the pictures from that uh, workshop or the seminar. And this workshop on new education policy was inaugurated by Honorable Sumitra Mahajan, speaker of Lok Sabha at that time. And she also used the digital platform for inaugurating this seminar on new education policy. And at the same time, there were so many uh, different types of research papers in from different aspects they have been presented here and i had the opportunity to discuss with many participants how they are thinking that how they want to implement or how they want to develop the new education policy considering not only from the primary education but till the higher education also and at the same time considering the lifelong learning approach and in this namodi framework or in this new education policy seminar we had the opportunity that how we can change the education system considering industrial revolution 4 also so that industrial revolution 4 can be used for making education revolution 4 using cyber physical based system also. And as I mentioned earlier, the key focus from Norwegian side it was that how we have to achieve or how we have to include the 17 goal of United Nations Sustainable Development into the education policy. In January 2019, Honorable Norwegian Prime Minister, she visited India. I was also a part of that delegation. And the key focus of that delegation was that how we have to integrate the sustainable development goals in overall sustainable development of the society and how the Norway can contribute in achieving the sustainable development goals in cooperation with India. That was the key focus here. Here you can see that the Prime Minister of Norway has given one call with all 17 goals mentioned on that to the, Prime, uh, to the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. And in the second picture, you will see that the Norwegian Prime Minister, she visited one small school uh, near Delhi and had a very good interaction with the school children that how the quality of education can be achieved or improved and how the, you know, how the Norwegian government can contribute in that. So considering all these points together and the, uh, the project which had with Indira Gandhi National Tribal University and University of Africa, I feel very happy that we have given some outputs from this project for developing or for, for, for developing the new education policy and in continuation to that, another I have project which I had with Indian uh, institutes, that is the Tata Energy Research Institute or the Energy and Resources Institute, that project is a thing on sustainable and clean energy. Under that project, just this month, we completed three small projects and those projects have been on promotion of renewable energy technology in the microgrid area or in the off-grid area for rural development and how the technologies from the Norway can be transferred to the India not only from the industry point of view but also from the research and education point of view also. So now coming back to the main point, Gandhiji has the dream that rural electrification will fulfill the dream of everything. So when we want to have the rural electrification, so with the help of the rural electrification, how we can give the energy independence to a village? It means that 
ऊर्जा स्वराज विलेज सो टू अचीव द एनर्जी इंडिपेंडेंस ऑफ विलेज इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू डिजाइन एंड डेवलप इंटीग्रेटेड रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी सिस्टम फॉर फुलफिलिंग द लोकल एनर्जी so when we are in a position to supply the local energy demand without depending on the main grid it means that we are making the local people self sustainable and in that uh, in the when we are making them self sustainable for the energy system they will be in a position to utilize the renewable energy technology for their their development and they may have the contribution right based on the available technologies also right which type of technology is going to be useful for them considering the local resources and as well as how this local renewable energy technologies can help in creating the local employment also and to have more more local sustainable growth in the system so here you can see that with the help of renewable energy technology we are in a position to fulfill the dream of gandhi ji of rural electrification so considering that here i have taken one typical example of hybrid renewable energy system for this typical example i have selected a case of a small village which is located in the very remote area of sri lanka and in that area the most of the tribal people or maybe the people who are having limited resources they are living in that area and we want to make them self sustainable or we want to provide them energy for their growth also and to fulfill their dreams also so how we have to design hybrid renewable energy system for a remote village to make them self sustainable or to give them the energy swaraj or energy independence for that point we need to consider that how we can utilize the local resources or local available energy resources and when we are considering about the local energy resources available then we have to consider that which technologies are going to be useful for that location considering the available local energy resources that is has to be there then at the same time of course we want to develop such type of hybrid renewable energy system more economical also so we have to consider the economic characteristics or the economic performance of these renewable energy systems on top of the technical performance also so for that we need to use more academic approach more so in the academic approach we have to consider that how the optimization can be done between the available energy resources available technologies their output as well as the economic parameters also right so all these factors are going to come into the research methodology then when we want to make that village energy independence so of course we need to consider how the energy availability or is going to be there and at the same time how the energy demand it is going to be there for that village so when we want to develop the research methodology for that one or we want to design the system for that one so the primary objective is that we have to consider the load profile or the load requirement for that particular village at the same time how renewable energy resources are available so we know that most of the renewable energy sources they are intermittent in the nature so they may not be in a position to make them the completely energy independence then we may need to include some conventional renewable energy systems and some of the conventional renewable energy system may not be the climate friend friendly but we have to make some optimization because we want that that's that small village should have the energy independence so therefore we need to consider the hybrid renewable energy system and then we have to see that how the modeling can be done and how we can get the appropriate techno economic optimum sizing of the different components also then when we are designing such system we we have find out the optimum sizing then we need 
to analyze or understand how this system is going to perform right what type of sensitivity analysis which we need to take into account not only from the technology point of view not only from the economic point of view but also considering the social conditions also how the load growth demand is going to be there the the people who are living in those villages what type of demands they are expecting so all those factors we need to take into account and then when we are going to develop such type of hybrid renewable energy system then at the same time we have to consider that how we can train the villagers or the unskilled peoples and to utilize them for operation and maintenance of such type of systems also so all these factors we need to consider before installing the hybrid renewable energy system in a village to make them the energy independence so that all those factors i have taken in this project and then of course from that like how we can do how we can find out some concluding remarks and what we can learn from this project and if we want to implement such type of hybrid renewable energy system for any remote area then how we can do the analysis by considering the local resources that have been considered in this project so here the objective is that for that particular location if we want to select the solar energy wind energy or maybe if we have available the hydro energy or bio energy mostly the renewable energy sources but some of these renewable energy sources they are quite intermittent in the nature so then naturally we may need to have the conventional generator so the conventional generator can be diesel generator also and then to make this system properly integrated so of course then we will need to have more uh, uh, appropriate capacity energy storage so when we are talking about the energy storage that will is going to be the battery bank so here maybe one another very important point is that when we have the energy storage or maybe the dc bus then such type of system is going to provide the opportunity for sustainable transport including electric vehicles because we know that for the electric vehicles or the electrical system transport system we need the dc points for the charging charging so such type of hybrid renewable energy system if we plan for a remote village can have multiple benefits okay then another very important point when we are talking about the renewable energy based of grid system then to make the system complete reliable and to have more affordable electricity then we this conventional source or the diesel generator is going to play the major role so this is the in my opinion if we have a remote village and we want to electrify that village so it may not be economical to extend the trans power lines or the transmission lines to that village but the such type of off grid system can fulfill the expected demand of energy for a development of the rural area so considering all this point then we have to consider that when we are talking about the rural electrification and we want to realize the gandhiji's dream right but at the same time we have to consider that the technical characteristics minimization of the cost also and whether the the cost which we are going to get from the system whether it will be affordable to the rural consumer or not how what type of government incentives can be provided in such type of system and the system which will be all, uh, will be there whether the village uh, rural com uh, community whether they will be in a position to accept it or not and how we have to do the combination of different generation sources how we have to make the hybrid system with uh, with factor like considering the cost and the availability so it is very important at the first point from the designing point of view that how we can find out the appropriate techno economic sizing of the integrated renewable energy system with conventional system in the off grid mode so for that first of all we will need to understand what is the demand is there how much renewable resources are available there what are the charges are going to be there and of course their associated cost the economic characteristics also and on top of that then 
technical operational characteristics of the system. So here you can see that the, in this selected uh, study, was one small village from Monargala district of Sri Lanka have been selected. And in that district, 48 villages have been there. So out of 48 villages, one village have been selected for designing hybrid renewable energy system. Here in this picture, you can see that the living condition of the people who are living in, in that area is more or less the same like what we, we can see in the Amarkanta area or in Chhattisgarh area of South India. So the learning from this project can also be utilized for uh, installing some hybrid renewable energy system for development of the tribal community or maybe for the rural village in the Chhattisgarh or Madhya Pradesh region also. And uh, now, when we want to design or we want to do the renewable energy hybrid system design, right? So now we are in the academic organization and from the, in the academic organization, our objective is that to do a very systematic study, not at a very high level. So first of all, we have to do the study on village load profile. Then we need to do the assessment of renewable energy sources at the selected site. Then we have to do the analysis of selecting the system components and their operational characteristics. At the same time, their economic characteristics also. Then we have to see that how we can do the hybrid. Then how we have to do the modeling and simulation and to get the results whether the system will be in a position to fulfill the demand of lo uh, local village to make them energy independence. And based on that, we have to go first before installing the system, the performance evaluation under the sensitivity analysis of different parameters. So these points, I think that maybe in the other National Tribal University can consider these points if they are interested in developing off-grid hybrid renewable energy system for a village located into the tribal region of Madhya Pradesh or Chhattisgarh also. So now here in this project, a particular village load profile has been selected. And for that village, the peak demand, it was around 25 kilowatt and daily average load, it was 270 kilowatt hour per day. So I'm not going to go in much detail about that. But at the same time, I mentioned that we need to understand the available local energy resources also. So here in this study, the location, it was from Sri Lanka. So for that location, the daily solar radiation, it was in the range of 5 kilowatt hour per meter square per day, which was quite good. So we used the data from the NASA. And at the same time, we also consider the wind resources available to that location. And it has been observed that for that location, the wind potential, it was quite high. It was 6.3 meter per second annual average wind speed. So that is very good. So by considering solar and the wind resources, then the system modeling has been done. And to overcome the intermittency of the renewable energy sources, diesel generator and the battery bank, they have also been selected. And the key objective of this work was to find out the best hybrid system which can supply the electricity at the lowest price with a separate level of availability. And then in this work, we consider several combination of the renewable energy system components, digital generator and battery bank with different capacity, considering their economic characteristics also. So here you can see that how this system has been configured. So this system has been off-grid system and it means that the system is not connected to the grid. It is more off-grid and providing the locally produced energy to the local people to fulfill the local energy demand so that they can have the uh, acceptable level of energy for their social development also. Right. So for that, considering the local resources and expected energy demand, the sizing of the system have been done. When we want to have the system sizing, right, and then when we are in the academic organization, we have to go in a very systematic way. So first, we have to consider the component characteristics, okay, how the electrical characteristics are going to be there. Not only that, but also the lifetime of the system, how their operational characteristics are going to be there, okay, how, what type of maintenance are going to be there, okay. Then another point, very important point, we have to consider the economics of the system, right? Market economics also, local energy economics also. Then when we are having this hybrid system, 
So, of course, we want to provide the energy to the local village in a very systematic way and in a very acceptable level. So, of course, we want to make the system more controllable and systematic so that the villagers should not get any problem also. So, of course, then we need to design very intelligent system. So, how we can have the system control there? And then this such type of systems are going to be in the off-grid or the rural area. Then we have to consider the fuel cost also. For the fuel cost, let's say we are considering the conventional diesel generator. So we have to consider that diesel cost, how much it is going to be there at that particular location. At the same time, when we are going to have such type of system, the land cost, again, that is very important. That factor also has to be taken into account. Then we need to consider, like, then when we want to design such type of project for a rural development, we have to consider that how much project lifetime is going to be there. Based on that, their operation and performance, maybe some of the components may not may not last till the end of the project lifetime. So we may need to have replacement at some appropriate level also. So operation and maintenance cost with replacement of system components that also has to be taken into account. And of course, the load profile, which we need to take into account. So here you can see that if suppose we want to design and develop hybrid renewable energy system for remote area and we want to give a, a, a very good solution to the rural community so being in the academic organization we have the responsibility to consider all these factors and to design the system okay so that the villagers or the rural community they should be very happy right yes the system which have been designed by designed for them is working perfectly and fulfilling their energy demand or contributing significantly in their sustainable development. So based on that, then what I mentioned in the previous slide, we have to consider all these things, equipment cost, installation cost, labor cost, shipping transportation cost, land cost, operation and maintenance cost, and the insurance and how we are going to pay the monthly wages to the local people who are going to contribute in this project. So all those factors we need to take into account. So here you can see that when we are talking about upgrade renewable energy system for rural community development. So we need to take into account the technical knowledge, economics knowledge, as well as the social knowledge also of that area. So here we can see that we need to integrate all these things together for food finding out the optimum sizing of the renewable energy, hybrid renewable energy system. Let's say if I take uh, based on the modeling which has been used for this Sri Lankan village. So the level, if we consider there is not any subsidy from the government or there is not any uh, contribution from any other source, if we have to uh, uh, utilize the project or project investment as it is, then the levelized cost of energy from this system is coming at 36 cent per unit of energy. And on the annual basis, the renewable energy fraction is around 80 percent. Let's say if we want to energize that village, but let's say due to some reasons, we are not in a position to include the renewable energy sources, then we the calculation. We observe. Uh, that sir, so, sorry to interrupt you, sir. Sir, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, your screen is not visible, sir. Kindly share it again. Yes, I will. Just a minute, okay? Yes, sir. Please. Yeah. From how long it was not visible? Uh, so five minutes. I think it's just shifted to a small window. The whole presentation is not visible on the larger screen. Uh, kindly uh, share it again, sir. Now you see. Yeah, now yeah. Now. Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Visible. Yeah, fine. So now it is seeing the optimization results. Yes, yes, sir. Very good. And uh, just a minute, I will make the full window. Uh, And now it is coming in the full window? Uh, so it is not in the presentation mode, but yes, it is in the full window. 
kindly okay. do it in the screen uh, we are unable to see the screen uh, that play mode no. yeah 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 fine fine sir fine so thank you thank you very much for reminding me uh, because uh, yeah, it's very important in the digital world that sometimes we never know how the situation is in the front right yes, so that's yes. the yes yeah thank you and thank you thank you so here you can see that when we are talking about the optimizations or we want to find the appropriate sizing of the hybrid renewable energy system then based on the methodology which i described in the previous slide we have the renewable fraction of 81% and for that the cost of energy it was coming 36 cent per unit of energy now let's take another scenario we want to energize that village but let's say we don't have the renewable energy resources available at that location or maybe due to some reasons we are not able to install but we want to provide the energy to them so in that case we, if we use the diesel generator and the battery pack means which is renewable energy fraction zero the energy cost is coming 54 cent per unit of energy let's say if we take another scenario where we want to have the 100% renewable energy so in that case then we will eliminate the diesel generator so in that scenario the levelized cost of energy is coming 50 cent per unit of energy so here i mean the objective is that when when we want to energize the village or we want to provide the electricity to that village and we don't have the possibility to extend the grid then with that different combinations right we can see that we can achieve that target but the cost of energy is also going to vary so all those factors we need to consider if we want to achieve the optimal objective of gandhi is on um, providing the electricity to the rural community so the best solution is that at this moment so to go for the hybrid renewable energy system through that we can avoid the intermittency of the renewable energy sources but at the same time we can provide the energy or the power to the village at a acceptable level also and of course then we can contribute towards the climate uh, goals also and we can achieve the sustainable development goals so such type of system are not going to contribute only to one united nation sustainable development goal but it is going to contribute in the multi in the multiple sustainable development goals also so here the important thing is that how we are going to utilize the local resources in this case we used the solar energy and the wind but for some of the location we may not have the appropriate solar potential or maybe appropriate wind energy potential also then we may need to consider the available bio energy or maybe available hydro power resources also so then another one very interesting point in place of diesel generator we can also include let's say if biofueled engine also for producing the electricity so here again i would like to highlight recently i have completed one project again that project it was funded by the norway government and that project it was the energy resources institute terry new delhi and the objective of that project was that for a rural area if that area is having a lot of biomass so how that biomass can be utilized through organic ranking cycle based engine for producing the electricity so in that project we have considered a uh, one uh, case study from the uttar pradesh where the jagri unit was there and from that jagri unit lot of biomass was there so how that biomass can be used through the gasifier and how this gasifier can be coupled to, to the organic ranking cycle the cycle engine for producing the electricity for that remote area so here the objective is that right we want to have the rural development we want to achieve the gandhi's objective so but at the same time we have to adopt the new technology how these new technologies are going to help for development of the rural community so here you can see that how the norwegian government is helping to the indian organization for achieving this united nations sustainable development goals in multiple way 
Now, then another very important point for such type of system is depending on the location. So for some location, the solar radiation may vary. For lo some location, the wind speed may vary. And we know that the cost of the system components, they are also going to are changing with reference to the market dynamics also and how we are installing the system, how we are training the local peoples. So all those factors we need to take into account while doing the sensitivity analysis, right? So here from the academic point of view, right? So there is a lot of scope for doing research work or maybe utilizing some of the learning from such type of projects in our education curriculum also. Right. So that is also very important so that we can provide the quality education to the next generations. Right. So that they can learn that how we can integrate the renewable energy system for local community development. So now here the system which we have optimized based on the hybrid renewable energy system for this for a small village in Sri Lanka. So the levelized cost of energy it was 36 cent per unit of energy with a renewable energy fraction of 80 percent and these are going to be the combination of different hybrid sources then another very important thing is that like if we want to uh, make some policy decisions for, for a such type of system then we have we can see that which type of sources are going to contribute towards the energy how much percentage of contribution from the wind are there how much percentage of contribution from photovoltaic or the diesel generators they are going to be there and then accordingly we need to do proper analysis and based on that proper analysis then we have to see that yes technically and uh, whether this uh, the project which we are going to design for the hybrid renewable energy system right whether it will be feasible or not right and then on top of that we have to see that how we can increase or how we can increase the penetration of intermittent renewable energy sources in such type of system by reducing right the conventional fuel consumption also and then accordingly how the market or the energy pricing are changing with reference to the market dynamics those factors also we need to take into account while doing the performance analysis. Then another very important point here, when we are talking about the rural development, and we know that for a particular ruler, particular village, if that village is from off grid, okay, it is away from the grid, and maybe at this time it may not be economical to extend the ne uh, network to that village, but maybe after some time, right? So the government may decide to extend the power lines to that village. So then what hybrid renewable energy system that is off grid at this moment may get connected to the main grid after some time, right? So while doing such type of analysis, when we want to energize the local community, we have to consider all these points into account. So in this project, it has been considered that after 10 years, let's say that village is going to be uh, connected to the power line. So after 10 years, then how this national grid or the grid which has been connected to that village and this off-grid system now it is becoming the grid connected how it is going to perform how the economics is going to be changed right so all those factors which we need to take into account for achieving the objectives of the rural electrification now here you can see that then another factor which have been taken into account like right? we have many distributed generators and we want to have one one generator. Let's say earlier in the project we have four wind turbines, but we want to uh, replace that four wind, tur uh, wind turbine with one wind turbine of 50 kilowatt capacity. Maybe let's say due to the uh, market availability or maybe due to the installation cost and etc. So then also this energy cost is going to be changed. So here we try to do that. Let's say if we don't want to have the four wind turbines, but we want to have the one wind turbine. So due to that, we may be in a position to reduce the operation and maintenance cost also. So in that condition, you can see that the renewable energy fraction is increased. It went to the 97% and at the same time, levelized cost of energy is also reduced. So the key point here is that Right. So when we want to design the hybrid renewable energy system, we have to consider many factors into account. OK, then only we will be in a position to provide appropriate solution for rural community. 
and then here I did some uh, economic viability with reference to different factors and like that. So it is like a more technical, so I will skip that one. But the conclusion is that if we have to move towards the hybrid renewable energy system for rural electrification or from Gramin Vikas, what we call it, right? Our Gram Swaraj, okay? For the Gram Swaraj, the key point is that we should have, we should give the independence to the villages to have their own energy costs. So for that, how we can develop the hybrid renewable energy system, considering their local demand, agricultural demand, okay, how the different loads are going to be there for the next 20 or 25 years. If the government is going to provide any subsidy, so what type of subsidies are going to be there? Okay, those all factors. Let's say when we want to have the hybrid renewable energy system and villagers, they may not have that much money. So maybe some company or maybe some organization, they want to invest that money. So of course, then when they are investing that much, so they will also like to have some return back on their investment also. So then how the energy cost is going to be there? whether it will be acceptable by the rural community or not, and how the government can help on that one. So all these factors have to be taken into account. Then another factor which has not been taken in this project that is very important, that how the carbon emissions, right? When we are taking more renew renewable energy sources, so naturally we are uh, contributing in the reduction of the CO2 gas. So if we put some penalty on that, or if you use some financial incentives on CO2 reduction, then also we will be in a position to make the system more attractive for the investment body. So all these factors which we need to take into account while designing the hybrid renewable energy system for the rural community. And then in the future, let's say we, uh, let's say this uh, work has been done, but now we want to implement this work into the field. Then, of course, to make the system more intelligent and more acceptable by the rural community because they not may not have the complete technical knowledge. So we may need to have very intelligent energy management system for operating the system uh, without compromising the acceptable level of the energy within that uh, rural community. So, and then at the same time, we have to consider that how we have to do a suitable operation and maintenance scheme and all those factors which we need to consider in doing further works related to the hybrid renewable energy system for off-grid area. I know that some of you may be interested in reading or uh, and understanding the detailed technical of such type of projects. So these are the four publications which are related to this work. They are available on this um, uh, through these links on here. And this work I was presenting in 39th annual conference of the IEEE Industrial Electronic Society of Australia. And this work has received the best paper award also. Okay. So here you can see that how this how we can use our technology knowledge, our energy economics knowledge for this development of the rural community okay so that is the key point here then another uh, with the last with the quote of gandhiji's i will uh, con conclude my lecture here gandhiji said freedom is not worth having if it does not including include the freedom to make mistakes so here it says that we will make the mistakes it means that when we are having the hybrid renewable energy system so some of the sources, they will make the mistakes, okay? And to overcome this, these mistakes, or to learn from this mistake, to make this energy system more reliable, okay? That we have to learn, and then we have to implement. So this is a very good example with reference to the point that when we want to have the energy freedom to the village, so we have to include how the freedom to learn from the mistakes which are going to happen in such type of hybrid renewable energy systems. So with, uh, with this uh, last slide, again, I would like to say to all of you, happy Independence Day, and we will be in a position to follow the Gandhi's thought 
in implementing renewable energy technology for rural development and for sustainable development of the society thank you thank you very much